in a second. Why don't you go pee before? No, 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 we're cool. Does anyone have to use the bathroom before we start? Are we there yet? I will turn this car around. Turn this damn bus around. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to start this off here in just a second. We're live. Remember, no yelling. No screaming. No yelling. No shit I'm, I'm writing this down. Wait, no yelling. No <laughs> So after we talk about that, then we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll do the newlyweds game, which, by the way, I'm super pumped about. Uh, I think it's going to be really awesome. And uh, then, do you, did either of you guys have a confession for us? I, I've been working on it really hard, but I, I've come up blank. Scotty, do you have one? I've got my confession. All right, I, I will nice. try to have something ready, but I might wimp out at the end. Don't force it. <clears throat> Don't force it yet. It always comes natural. It always does. You can't force it. In my experience, no. Oh, oh, confessions. Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is why we started recording. All right. Um, so then, if you don't have a confession, you're welcome to. We stole the we stole the Oriole Spastics clothing thoughts, and we're just calling it closing thoughts. That's okay. Uh, so if you have a closing thought, yeah, they don't podcast. Who are those guys? Um, so if you have a closing thought to add instead, you're welcome to rant about something for 30 to 60 seconds. Um, so we'll, we'll do that at the end. So we're very loose here. Feel free to speak your mind. If we start talking over one of the, one another, you guys just keep talking and we'll shut up. That's our podcast. Your podcast, so that's perfectly fine. Awesome. All right. So we'll start down three, two, one. Welcome to the OBP podcast, the voice of the Baltimore Sports Hipster. I'm your host, Cal Renner. And joining me as always, well, I guess sort of always, most of the time, are my two co-hosts for the evening. Now, we advertised originally, my brother Liam is a co-host here, but he, for some reason, didn't show up tonight. So, uh, mysterious circumstances surround it. And look who jumped it back in. Sal, you're here. Did you have anything to do with the fact that Liam couldn't show up tonight? Cousin Liam swimming with the fish. <laughs> That's my brother. So, I hope you really didn't kill him. All right, moving on. Uh, also joining us this evening... The pride, the pride, the pride of Boston. No, I was gonna say, don't you dare take Steve Lombardi's no, title away. No, no, you're pride not the pride of, of Baltimore. Pride. Not the pride of Baltimore. That's Steve Lombardozzi. God rest his soul. Um, the pride of Falston, Mr. Joseph Paparato has joined us as well. Joe Pa, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having. Me. I'm I'm more excited about this podcast with another podcast than I've ever been about any of our podcasts before. So. Yeah, we're excited. We have a couple know, guests joining us a little bit later this evening, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, so, uh, gentlemen, first things first, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, how about those Terps? You know, they're they're right now they're playing uh, they're playing Nebraska. Nebraska. They're they're up by three points, uh, headed towards March Madness, guys. It's an exciting time of the year. Sal, just a quick hit. What do you think, Terps? Terps, do they make the tournament? I mean, that's a that's well, a foregone yeah, conclusion. They'll probably be a four or five seed. Four or five seed. All right. How far do you see them making it in the tournament? Here's the problem with the Terps this year: they can't defend on the perimeter. Wiley, Nickens, those guys don't play defense, and therefore every team shoots lights out behind the arc. Until they can defend the great three-point shooting teams, they're not going to be able to advance late into March or even April. So. Hopefully they can figure that out. Maybe Des Wells is getting a little bit more confident, taking it to the rack more. Got to hit our foul shots. Got to hit the foul shots. It's not just mellow. Now, my, my question for you, Sal, do you think that according to their seeding is how well they're, they're really going to do, or do you think that it doesn't matter what seeding that they're in, um, they're... Are they going yeah, they 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 to rise above what their seed is? Are they right. going to play above their heads, or are they playing... Doesn't matter. It really depends on the type of team. Like I just said, they don't really match up well against good shooting teams, but they can bang. They're a big team. They can get in there and bang. <laughs> they can get in there and bang. Salerno. You heard it here first, guys. The Terps can bang. Um, great, awesome. Uh, so of course, also Major League Baseball spring training basically started today. Pitchers and catchers, guys. Remember when it used to be just pitchers and catchers reported, and you get Rockabaco tweeting like. Somebody was stuck at the airport and didn't get their car, or like you know, didn't. Now it seems that the whole team shows up the day that pitchers and catchers are. And we get pictures of every single one of them. 
Thank God. The 40 man roster. Thank God we have the, we have the entire blurry 40 man roster posted today on Twitter. It's fantastic. I'm, yeah. I saw five blurry pictures of Ryan Flaherty today. And it's funny because I only follow NBA accounts, <laughs> so I was too busy watching all the trade updates and stuff like that. I didn't really notice yeah. any of the screen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, probably not surprised that you only follow NBA accounts. Um, but yeah, I mean, we saw some some of the big names for today. We saw Madison Bumgarner show up today, of course. Brandon uh, Barra. Yeah, Brandon Barra. <laughs> <Right. laughs> saw Fat Panda show up yesterday. Fat Panda, fatter than ever. Fatter than absolutely. And you know what? Ever. Good, good for him. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah, but that kind of it kind of reminds me of like Boris Diaw with the Spurs. Like you can be fat and athletic if you can find your role. Boris your Diaw role or roles. You said of the of the NBA, the Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, and, all right. Uh, it's an interesting talking, comparison. We're talking about baseball. Yeah. It's interesting you bring up the NBA. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's an exciting time. You know, baseball is back. Spring you know, is in the air. Spring is in the air. You, you know? know, it's literally Antarctica in the air. Yeah, it's pretty cold outside. Um, no, literally Antarctica. I literally <laughs> cannot open my car door. That's pretty basic white girl of you. <laughs> I'm a basic Try putting down the pumpkin latte before you try and open it. <laughs> You'll have uh, much greater success. Um, so, I mean, but so I mean, going into it, you're gonna have a lot of stories, of course, the, the AL East, how that's gonna work out. Um, you know, what would you say is your is your number one story heading into spring training outside of Orioles camp? Number one story heading into spring training uh, for the whole yeah, yeah for baseball, major baseball, major yeah. League baseball. Um, I think the whole story is, I think the biggest. Free agent signing was the Max Scherzer. Sure. And just to see, I, I've watched a lot of Nationals baseball. I'll say it again. I watch a lot of <laughs> Nationals baseball. Right. Uh, it's always, is that the piece that they need? So they're the favorites. It, that's what they're going to be. That's what I'm looking for. How's, how's Max Scherzer going to do? Sure. Yeah, so. Sure. Sal, you look like you're chomping at the bit to respond. I Honestly, I'm most excited to see how Barry Zito does. Here's a guy that... Like had awesome success his first time around in Oakland. He's coming back, and it's a it's a no guarantee deal. He's just gonna back home and see what he can do. Is there anything left in the tank? Can he help this young group of guys get over the hump? It kind of reminds me, Kevin Garnett got traded today back to Minnesota. He Wait. waved his no trade. Wait a second. Wait and a KG is coming you, home. What are you talking about? I know what you're doing here. You're trying to get us to talk about the NBA. And there's a strict moratorium right now on the OBB. Nope. No, no NBA, NBA talk. It's the NBA trade deadline. It's, I don't care. Moratorium. John Wall. No, it is moratorium. not going to happen. John no Wall. talking. No NBA. No. We will mute. Not tonight. So help me God, we will mute your microphone. Yeah. No NBA talk. Stop it. <sighs> Bad sound. No NBA talk. I think this is a good time to bring in our two guests so we can talk about something other than NBA. Yeah, these are two guys who good friends of the podcast here. They do their own podcast weekly. Uh, unlike us, they, they do it weekly and do it pretty darn well, if I do say so. Much better than us. <laughs> these guys are, compared to us, these guys are professionals. Uh, that, of course, being Scott and Jake for Bird's Eye View. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks for having us, and, and look, if you're going to suck up to us, we, we expect a, a really big request coming next. <laughs> should not be talking NBA basketball. Well, we were hoping you guys would sponsor our podcast, and by sponsor, like, legitimately pay for us to do this uh, on a weekly basis. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But I, we probably I've got an won't... extra kidney. I'm sure it's worth something. Hey, there we go. You what see? are we going to do? Ingenuity. That's what this podcast is missing. Somebody with the brains, you know? We got the brawn, the looks, the sal, <laughs> sal. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know we, we need the brain, so we're glad to have Wait, you guys on. The looks. Oh, the look. Okay, good. Just yeah. So we're on the same page. Yeah. Right? Duh. Okay. You're the brawn. <laughs> I mean, the Ryan brawn, maybe. <laughs> You're the brawn. Show <laughs> <laughs> We just we just have anger, drinking, and whining on our program. That those are our, our main functions, I think. We're we're the we're the loser hipsters that think things like. Wait a minute! You have anger, whining, and drinking. Are you guys, you basically are Twitter for podcasts. Is that what you're saying? Less well thought out. 
<laughs> like an Orioles AA meeting. <laughs> Uh, but we're we're super glad to have you guys on the program. Thanks for joining us this evening. We talk some we're gonna talk some Orioles baseball. We're gonna talk a little bit about some uh, retired numbers and stuff about from the evil empire. And then uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun in a little bit later. Uh, so we're <laughs> we're excited to have you guys on. I guess first things first. Uh, the big news that broke this week was the signing or potential signing in the next week or two of uh, of Everth Cabrera. I'd love to hear your guys on on what you thought of the uh, the signing of. Of Mr. Cabrera and uh, what you think he could add to this team. Jake, can you go first? What's that? Uh, sure. I, here, here's the thing about Everett Cabrera. I think he's a baseball player, um, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that we're talking about giving him in the range of two million dollars. And I think that we already have a utility infielder. And if I'm not mistaken, we just had another guy who's not going to make the club who is now having bone spurs removed from his shoulder. So maybe this is the new backup guy who's not going to make the club or something. Okay. But we're signing it for $2 million. So. Right. It, it's a good use of money. To be fair, Jake, I mean, we did sign uh, last year Alexi Casilla for $1.9 million. So um, honestly, it is kind of the going cost of a veteran Major League Baseball player. And... Cabrera does have an option rating, so he can play in Norfolk, but again, he also proves to be a speedster, which may be a benefit to uh, the team, um, especially in September, if they're again going for a playoff spot. Hey, Scott, I'm going to have you repeat that answer one more time for me and just take the microphone out of your mouth, if possible. <laughs> sure, no problem. <laughs> there um, we go. Much better. Um, so... Cabrera, you know, has an option remaining, so he's going to be in Norfolk to start the season. But the other situation, Alexi Casilla uh, was signed last year for $1.9 million. So, yeah, they're going to sign Cabrera for $2.7 million. But honestly, that's not much of a difference uh, compared to what the Orioles have spent in the past. Uh, I think it's more of a question of you've already signed Ray Navarro back in November of this year, and now you've signed, uh, you know, Cabrera. The question is, how many middle infielders can the Baltimore Orioles sign? But... Uh, Dan Cat is a known fiend for going out and uh, buying and purchasing as many contracts for utility and middle infielders as possible, especially when Brian Roberts was hurt for uh, the many years. I think you're on to something, Scott. I think that Dan Duquette, after this really awkward offseason, is now just trying to buy our love by signing all of the remaining middle infielders, like just hoping that one of these cats will make us happy again, will make us love him once more. You know, Ricky Wake is still available. Oh, that's that's a name. That's a name right out there. He just signed. Oh wait, he did. Who yeah, did he sign with? Oh, he definitely signed. He, he All right, did. darn. Okay, well, let's... Scott, I want you to be my accountant. Uh, because <laughs> you just you just flung out so many numbers at me, and I'm like very impressed. <laughs> it's account I'm, or I'm, the count from. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Ah. Now we're talking. All right. I love. I the, we the do cow. a lot. We do a lot of agreements <laughs> on this podcast, guys. We agree. And I am so glad that there may be a disagreement here. Yeah. On on these sides. So I want to. Joe Pot, go ahead. I, do you state wanna, your case, please? Do I want to? Do, do you want to disagree for the first time in the history of the OBP podcast? I might. I might want Sal to take the table on this one. I thought I wasn't allowed to talk you, about don't, the NBA. Don't relate it to the NBA. Don't know. Well, then NBA I can't talk. answer the question. <laughs> can can Edward Cabrera play basketball? That's what I'm asking here. I, no comment. No. <laughs> no. Um. So we've we've been looking for that leadoff hitter, and I look. Edward Cabrera is not going to be good. A, <laughs> your starter, but at the same time, like you need insurance for Hardy, who's had back problems the past few seasons, and can fill in at 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 uh, short. Stein is made out of paper machine. And Evidently, Manny is made out of paper mache as well, so he can always fill in a third as well. You got a young Jonathan Scope, who, you know, Buck I think I think I, Buck loves him, but I think he'll eventually mature to a uh, to a good power hitter. But until <laughs> then, until then, I mean, Harold Reynolds made a great point. I think point Everett last Cabrera week. might be your best option because he the guy has so much speed. He can switch hit, which hey, they they love that stuff. Harold Reynolds made a great point about Scope last week, which might be the only time I ever give Harold Reynolds props for anything. Because <laughs> he's pretty much brain dead most of the rest of the time. But 
Harold Reynolds made a point. Jonathan Scope hit 20 home runs last year and didn't have a clue what he was doing for three quarters of the year. Right. Didn't have a clue. Didn't what have he a was clue doing. what he was doing. So Harold Reynolds is an that, so you got to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. <laughs> so Sal, your argument for Everett Cabrera? Hey, I'm saying that he probably isn't as good as he was when he was hopped up on juice, but he probably wasn't as bad as he was last year. So, worst case scenario, he's a guy that you can have on your bench that can come out, that can steal some bases. We saw how effective it was having Quentin Berry on the roster late last season. Can you imagine what we can do with this guy for the full season? All those late-game situations that Buck loves to coach. I mean, it, it can't hurt to have a guy like that around. Imagine I'd rather having, have him than, like... Imagine having a utility... Slapdick Navarro. <laughs> imagine having a utility player that can on base... And steal bases. I mean, you got your. Wait, I mean, Quinton Berry was so good during September that you know he basically had to make the October roster. <laughs> <laughs> the playoffs. Am I am I allowed to disagree? I don't I don't want to like yes. break the unwritten rules of OBP here. But uh, let me <laughs> let me just ask you this: if if everybody in the infield is apparently a glass man, which which I agree that you're you're right but between Hardy's back or hip or whatever old man injuries he comes up with, with Manny Machado's six million dollar man knees, with uh, Jonathan Scope maybe not being able to figure out what he's doing, with Chris Davis, Chris Davis argument is even too depressing to say out loud. But with all <laughs> those things going on. Is the bigger value to the team having a guy like Everett, who's got a weird name and uh, also <laughs> is quick, or is the better value to the team having a guy like Ryan Flaherty, who can fill a lot of roles, who can do a lot of things for you? And and let me just say that disfavorably comparing him to Ryan Flaherty is not my love for Ryan Flaherty, but rather my newfound respect for this guy Cabrera. <laughs> Going into Cabrera, too, I mean, last year, me and Jake made a big deal about Delman Young, and uh, let's just say his off-field issues, and Cabrera is no different. Uh, he's currently going to be facing uh, courts uh, uh, charges for... <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I <laughs> forgot we were doing a podcast. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, they won't be back on the podcast ever again. <laughs> did, right. did someone just die? <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. But what we were right, saying, yeah, yeah. Tell, so tell all the field, to, to start with Delman. Start back over with Delman Young. Okay, sure. So uh, me and Jake were talking about this last year with Delman Young and uh, let's just say his off-season issues. Um, but Everett Cabrera is going to be facing court charges in April uh, regarding resisting an arrest. He's had issues with domestic abuse before and marijuana possession. Um, Buck has indicated that you know he's willing to give the guy a second chance, but it's kind of hard to root for the guy over you know the lovable character, which is Ryan Flaherty. Sure, sure, absolutely. I, I, how, how is that any? I mean, look, no, I, I all, agree. all athletes beat their wives. Come I mean, come on. So in both, but, that's not true. <laughs> It, it could be true. <laughs> hey, hey, I look for the brave new world in which professional athletes can beat their husbands. I mean, I think that we're ready for that as a society. This is a perfect opportunity for Sal to talk about the WNBA. Go. <laughs> but no, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of times where you don't yeah, you don't want to root for somebody, but is he is he the right answer? He no, could be. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> I like disagreeing. This, this is, is good. Fun. This is Look, I, I want the Orioles to get better. I always want the Orioles to get better, and that's why I want them to sign good players. I want them to sign better players than the ones we have on the 40-man roster. I'm just not sure that uh, Dan Duquette knocked it out of the park in this category. Uh, I'm with not sure that Dan Duquette has knocked anything out of the park this offseason. The bigger aspect, too, is coming back to the speed discussion is you guys kept on saying, you know, speed's going to be great, this team doesn't have any speed, but, you know, speeds are actually a really overrated stat um, if, if I were to ask you guys, you know, who led the league last year in stolen bases, could you guys give me the name? It was D. D. Gordon, wasn't it? It was yeah. D. Gordon. But, I mean, would you consider that D. Gordon is an all-star player? No, but no. D. Gordon... Do you think D. Gordon's a difference maker? Oh, I think he was definitely yes. a di difference maker on that team. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me ask you a different way. Is there anything more effective than the black magic that is... J.J. Hardy being sent home from first 
on a double, running like he's got Matt Wieters on his back. It always <laughs> happened. Windmill always sent him, and it almost always worked. So yeah. tell me that speed is that important. But when you can score from first... Let me answer your question with a question. When you go up against a team like the Kansas City Royals, who had devil magic on their side as well, but you saw what speed meant to that team. And maybe I'm answering your question with my question, saying the Orioles clear, clearly aren't built the same way that the Royals were last year. So maybe speed doesn't mean anything to this team because one speed guy isn't going to make your team a speed team all of a sudden. They're not going to be – they're not going to lead the league in on-base percentage, and they're not going to bunt, and they're not going to, like, you know well, – hit. It gives it a different dynamic. Well, I mean, coming back to the Royals situation in the ALCS, the Orioles didn't lose so much to a certain extent because of the speed. I mean, the instances when they did try to steal bases, Caleb Joseph did a great job of throwing those runners out. The situation was the Royals had some really good luck, like you said, with the Black Magic in terms of letting balls fly in the air and basically go opposite field and just kind of find a hole. Uh, the other situation was you ran against a team that is a high-contact percentage team, and the Orioles generally did pretty poor as a you know against those high contact percentage teams. Um, so the Royals, you know, kudos to them. They you know had a very lucky series for four games, but you know long term wise, that's just generally not a way that most teams learn to you know survive over a long season. And, and I apologize because I'm ask, I'm asking out of ignorance. Uh, a tenet of bird's eye view is that I don't research anything. Um, <laughs> You talk about how fast Cabrera is, but is he a high on base percentage guy as well? Because if he's just fast, that's one thing. If he's he's really fast and he gets on base a lot and utilizes that speed, well, maybe I'm not giving him enough enough credit. I think his other dynamic is that he's a is a switch hitter, and Buck loves doing the matchups with that. Well, he doesn't. He didn't really do anything well last year. He was kind of um, how do I put this? Um, Fucking terrible. <laughs> um, he was just a bad baseball player in pretty much every aspect. He had uh, negative fielding like zone ratings and everything yeah. like that. He didn't play well in the field. He didn't get on base. He struck out too much, and that's why he was not welcome back with his team at the end of the season. <laughs> but it, Coming back to Jake's thing, uh, the on-base percentage last year for him was a 272 on on-base percentage, so that's high quality right uh. there. <laughs> that's, uh, that's about, but that's about par for the Orioles. I <laughs> really struggled in that. Game. that. That's pretty poor. And over his career, his lefty and righty platoon splits are pretty identical. His righty splits are 243 average, and his lefty split is 261 average. So that doesn't scream um, difference maker as a platoon player as well. Right. It's not a. It's. It's, it's not a. No it's not a one-sided go. split. But I'm are, just saying it gives you we, some. Uh, Hey, Aren't we also player. arguing about the 25th guy who might be on the roster? Isn't this like discussing who might be valedictorian of summer school? It, it, it really, <laughs> but no, this is a good thing because we used to de- try to discuss who's going to get the fourth and fifth spot. We right, what? right. <laughs> you don't have to. A guy anymore. with this caliber, a guy with this with this pedigree would probably be a starter on the teams during the dark ages. I I, I will give Absolutely. you. Absolutely. He'd be an all-star. He would have been on the, the damn poster that they hung up all over the series. <laughs> like, come so, see Everett Cabrera. Like, did he, Maximum Cabrera. Did you're, he say you're, Everett? you're telling me this is all-star Ty Wigginton territory? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I could definitely definitely feel that. Rest in peace. Um, but, uh, all right, gentlemen, just just a quick hit on, uh, on something else. Wanted to get your opinion. We touched on it briefly on our last episode, and that was the whole Dan Duquette debacle. It's been talked about for weeks now and supposedly it's over. Me, it's it's over for at least until next off season. But uh, did you guys were you, did you guys have hurt feelings about the Dan Duquette thing? Did you feel were, were you kind of the mind like the a lot of the Twitter verse was that Dan's sitting on his hands because he's more interested in going to a, another another team or did you think that he was just out there kind of doing what what Dan has done the last couple of years? If you really believe that Buck Showalter is allowing that to happen, um, I think you are pretty much misconceived. Uh, it, the fact that even if Dan Duquette was sitting on his hands and just waiting for another phone call from Toronto, that the rest of the Orioles organization under the helm of Buck Showalter wasn't doing stuff this offseason um, is pretty misguided. So for people to say Dan Duquette was specifically sabotaging the Orioles and uh, had set them up for this uh, failure in offseason... No, I mean, the off season, this offseason was all about basically getting ready for arbitration. 
There was no re- way that we were going to go back and sign Nelson Cruz to a four-year contract. There was no way that they were going to go out and sign Andrew Miller. The only surprise of this whole offseason really was Nick Marcakis not re-signing with the Orioles. But for a four-year contract, I'm not sure if the Orioles should have signed Nick Marcakis again for a four-year contract. So uh, I'm not going to be upset with Dan Duquette about the whole situation. In fact, as podcasters, uh, we were very happy to have something to talk about this offseason because <laughs> Uh, most off seasons to talk about the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, yeah. Scotty, Scotty hit just about all the all the right notes there. I, I, I would say, however, that this off season, it was a very Dan Duquette esque off season. If it weren't all this intrigue with Toronto, l- let's review. No sexy moves. All right, a lot of a lot of overpriced guys left. Uh, a lot of guys that are going to make a lot of money elsewhere that are are going to be paid for by other teams left that aren't in the Orioles' uh, M O of spending. Then they went off and they got guys like Travis Snyder, who are in that former first rounder, uh, coming into their own probably mold the same way as you know like a Steve Pierce and a Nate McLeod. Like these are the Dan Duquette guys, right? This is the kind of team that Dan Duquette builds. If it weren't for all this Toronto intrigue, we would be saying, oh, okay, it's, this is Dan Duquette doing Dan Duquette's thing. He's, he's collecting middle infielders at the end of the offseason, just like he always does. I, I will say that it was a little awkward. I don't, I don't hold it against Dan Duquette. You know, if he wants a better job, you know, a lot more money and in, in, in an opportunity to eat a lot more Canadian bacon, great, good for him. Th- there's nothing wrong with that. I will say that it, it was very awkward, uh, and I do blame a lot of that on the Toronto organization, but I will say that even if there's just a whisper of Dan Duquette not doing his job because he's got divided loyalties, like even if that's just hanging there, I feel like it's an untenable situation. I feel like it's untenable because for a long part of the offseason, it wasn't just us and Toronto who didn't know what was going on. It was free agents, uh, agents. It was other GMs throughout the or, uh, throughout the industry. I, I feel like there may have been a point at which, you know, somebody may have been holding off and dealing with the Orioles because they thought maybe they would get a better deal with the next regime. Yeah. And that's the only thing about it that I think is, is kind of up in the air. I'm going to have to disagree because, again, the other... GM that the uh, Blue Jays were interested in was the GM for the White Sox, and the White Sox had no issues this offseason going out and getting plenty of players onto their offseason. It was simply a situation of the Orioles knew that they were going to be spending money in arbitration, and they didn't want to put that money back into any of the free agencies out there. Um, I just This is a typical Orioles offseason, and for anybody to be really surprised by it... Um, and blame it on Dan Duquette. It's just not the situation. This is this is an Orioles offseason, just like we have come to expect. Great, um, great. We're not crazy then. We thought we were the only ones that thought that this was the signature Dan Duquette uh, offseason. Um, like yeah, this it's, is it's just own. not. It's not as popular an opinion because it lacks that righteous indignation. I mean, you can't have an hissy fit <laughs> on the internet if you have a very moderate opinion with well reasoned uh, thoughts. There, hey. You're preaching, preaching to the choir here. All right, uh, real quick, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with Jake and Scott, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Orioles retired numbers, Yankees retired numbers, and then uh, we're actually going to play the podcast edition of the Newlyweds game, which I'm very excited about. So stay with us. We'll be right back. You got to pay? Yeah, we're going to talk about the numbers. You want to, and then we'll, then we'll do the new list. Work? How you guys doing? You guys all right? We're good. I just thought that Maryland was going to throw the game away there. <laughs> What's the score? It was 62-65, but they inbound the ball, um, and uh, Nebraska stole it, and then they missed an easy layup, basically. Okay. All right. So Maryland's going to win now. <sighs> all right. Go I told I told Joe Pye, I said this Nebraska was definitely gonna cover. That's what was the what was the point spread? Like six. Okay. Oh. I don't know. Now I don't know they, might, they might start fouling. <laughs> so those scrappy huskers. Yeah, Maryland's got a good stretch coming up. If they can win all of their games other than Wisconsin, they should get like a they got two more games at home, game. right? Two after this. Two in a row. Yeah, yeah two more in a row. They're about to lose the spread. <laughs> Ooh. Hope you didn't bet on it, Sal. I didn't. I didn't bet on any of these. <laughs> Last week I bet on Indiana <laughs> with the points because, like, Turf's aren't going to cover against Indiana. And uh, 
That was a big win. <laughs> <laughs> nice. La- last week, I spent my money on feeding my kids, which is actually kind of a big gamble when you think about it. <laughs> Because they'll they'll either take care of me in my old age or just make me miserable for another you know thirty years. I think you know how that's gonna end. Yeah. Which might shorten your life as much as like a bookie might shorten mine. <laughs> if I don't. See, a bookie will only come after your knees, whereas children will go after your very soul. Yep. That's true. Yeah. You see, we're not all that different, you guys. We're not all that different. I'm still pissed at Joe Pop for not helping a brother out. <laughs> I keep them all. Rant, rant about that in your th- in your closing thought. Hey, uh, Megan, <laughs> <laughs> call me. All right, bring it back. Three, two. Welcome back to the OBP podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us here on the Elite Podcast Network. Of course, we are a podcast network of two. Make sure you check out the other podcast right here at obpapparel.com. Joining us this evening are Jake and Scott. From the Bird's Eye View podcast, uh, gentlemen, one of you give us a give us a plug here where people can hear you on a weekly basis, where they can read your blogs and uh, listen to you guys. I'm sure you guys are on iTunes, um, but uh, tell us where else they can find you. Yeah, you can find us on iTunes, but we don't like to uh, try to promote that kind of Apple product because we've had issues with it in the past. If you really want to follow follow us, you should follow us on Stitcher. Uh, we have a really good affinity with Stitcher. But also you should be following us on Twitter at Bird's Eye View BAL, and you can check us out on our website at birdseyeviewbaltimore.com. Good stuff there. You guys, uh, I know you guys write, write some pieces usually during the season. You guys are always up there. Uh, and you guys pretty much podcast like a regular podcast. Like, you make us yeah. look bad. You guys like, spit hot fire. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are putting out new episodes, even with Hot Stove. Like, you guys are out there talking Everett Cabrera and Dan Duquette. It's awesome. It's exciting. Uh, but we appreciate you guys. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everett. I feel like I... feel like a ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Everett Cabrera and Leon Phelps. Oh <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we went to break, we talked about, just briefly mentioning, guys, this week, um, one of our favorite topics to talk about, we actually spoke about this probably a year ago around the same time because... Uh, well, it happens every year. Well, it happens every year. Uh, the Yankees announced this week that they are going to retire three more numbers and place three more monuments in their Hall of Fame slash Monuments Park, of course, that being Jorge Posada, Bernie Williams, and Andy Pettit. All three of those gentlemen will have their numbers alongside the likes of Lou Gehrig, Babe Ruth. Um, who else is out there? Mariano Rivera. Eventually, it will be Derek Jeter, um, yeah, Reggie Jackson. Like he, You have a bunch of numbers out there now of, of guys that are legitimate Hall of Famers, and then you're putting Bernie Williams and... Uh, and Tino Martinez. Let's go, guys. I know, I know. Yeah, I know you're ready. I know. I, for, let's get Sal's there. about to suck some serious Yankee dick right now. <laughs> I know it's pretty scary. I'm all upset. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion just on this. Do you do you guys find it ridiculous? I to me, I made the comparison. <laughs> like, can you imagine taking your kids? And they've kind of already broken the sanctity of it. This was Sal's argument last time we talked about this. Is oh, they already have Roger Maris in there, whose mm-hmm. claim to fame is that you know he had had the home run record at one point. Or you have, uh, you know. Who else is in there? Thurman Munson, who, well, you know... What's wrong with Thurman Munson? Like, he died in a plane his crash. His name is Thurman oh, Munson. It's his fault? No, but that's the only reason they put him in the Hall of Fame. Oh, I don't know. He was the best player on a lot of bad Yankees teams. Right, so the best of so the worst. So was Brian Roberts. Are you going to put Brian Roberts' number on the up with, with the guys? Well, anyway, I'd be so very surprised my point is, the this is supposed to be the the elite of the elite. This is the most elite franchise in the history of baseball. It's, it's an honor to be in their Hall of Fame. And you're putting Tino Martinez and, and Bernie Williams and Jorge Posada next to Babe Ruth and Mariano Rivera. Do you guys have a thought or an opinion on this? Well, I, I think that those are all very good players who are having their numbers retired by the Yankees. And I don't want to take anything away from them because they, they won championships. They were excellent players in their own rights. And, and I don't want it to sound like I do not respect them. However, having said that, I don't think their numbers would be being retired if the Yankees were winning right now. And I think the Yankees have to do what they can to keep excitement and the legend of Yankee greatness alive. And what better way to do that than to remind people of a time when the Yankees were an unquestioned dynasty, uh, a a 
group of teams that could uh, not be matched by anyone in baseball. And now that uh, they've been caught up with uh, age and money and uh, have shown themselves to be mortal, all they can do is immortalize the past. And, uh, you know, good luck to them. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's a little ridiculous. And, and, and honestly, at some point, like, they're going to run out of numbers. Like, that's just math. <laughs> I, math is not my thing, and Scotty can attest to that. But like, eventually they're going to have to go to triple digits or Greek letters or something. But it's it's kind of it's kind of absurd. Feel like uh, Scotty, confused. what do you think? <laughs> uh, Scott, you got any thoughts on that too? I mean, I don't really like to talk about the Yankees too much, but uh, I'll, I'll just come back to the situation. That there are some really good players in there, like Andy Pettit is a really great player, but there is a shroud hanging over him, just like the Chuck Knobloch tweet talked about, and, you know, with the HGH use. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say besides it's the Yankees. They're just going to do whatever they want to do. Um, fuck the Yankees. It's as simple as that. Right. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. That's what we do. That's what Amen. We're That's the right answer. Sal, you ready to go on your diatribe? Yeah, okay, so this all started, um, and it, it rubbed me the wrong way. Cal, Cal does this every year whenever a Yankee player announces that he's having his number retired. And, and last year there was this assault and everything. And look, don't get me wrong, I hate the Yankees as much as any other team in any other sport. Like, Wait, you don't hate them more? <laughs> I'm saying, like, they're, they're the it. Okay. Like, no team surpasses my hatred for then New York. But you guys are bashing Andy Pettit and acting like he's this run-of-the-mill guy that was just, like, a cog in their system. Which Andy Pettit has, he has 19 playoff wins. To put that in perspective, the Baltimore Orioles franchise, the entire franchise has 53 postseason wins. Mm -hmm. Andy Pettit has 19. Team by himself. Counterpoint. Busted. Busted for using performance enhancing drugs. Yeah, okay, great. Awesome. You also, and have, to in, you also have to include the playoff expansion that happened after 1994, which also included the divisional series, which allowed a plethora of more games for Andy Pettit to win during that time. Absolutely. And the Orioles have had how many more seasons to play in playoff games? And the Orioles have also benefited from a wild card game, and that counted towards their 53 wins, which but, Andy Pettit never had an opportunity to pitch all, in remember, the Yankees. The, the Orioles played in many seasons prior to this, but again, lots of those seasons were just American League Championship Series and World Series, uh, and if you yeah, didn't win the pennant or, in the American League East, you didn't go to the playoffs. So there was plenty of time that Weaver's teams you know, had you know, 95 to 98 wins, but they didn't go to the playoffs. There were some really good teams in there, and they didn't go to the playoffs. Um, you know, I, I understand where you're going with the aspect of, yeah, Andy Pettit has a lot of, you know, playoff wins, but I really hate that aspect of Yankees, you know, being trumped up with their Hall of Fame credentials strictly because of playoff wins and playoff stats. Playoff stats in this past 20 years are pretty highly exaggerated, but that being said, Andy Pettit is a great player um, if you just look at him from he a also has more regular season other player. Pitcher. Thousands. Yeah. Like, regular season wins. Yeah, exactly. Like, Okay. <laughs> regular, regular season pitching wins is a really good stat, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> do you basically, think, um, do you think that he's it, way better than, like, anybody the Orioles have had since their great team? But we're talking about but we're talking about the Yankees Hall of Fame. Like, I'm saying comparing right. him to other – and, I, and he, he, was, he was the least person that I cared about that they were saying they were announcing – just because of what he that, did for I'll them in the playoffs. Okay, talk about Jorge Posada and Bernie Williams okay, and why great. they should be re retired awesome. numbers retired okay, right alongside quick, Babe Ruth. If you've Ruth. ever heard Bernie Williams play guitar, then <laughs> you would have no issue with him being in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> All right, Tim McCarver. One to Jorge Posada. Jorge Posada. Okay, Bernie Williams deserves to be in the Hall of uh, Hall of Fame for the Yankees strictly for his appearance on Seinfeld with Derek Jeter. I mean, that's just. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Bernie Williams should also be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in <laughs> Cleveland because the man is a genius. Um, Jorge Posada had oh. five silver sluggers. Oh, my God. He oh, average, oh, Jesus Christ. Over the course of one season, 162 games, 24 home runs, and 94 RBIs. Ooh. Name another catcher putting up those numbers. Go ahead. I'll wait. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Probably Ivan Rodriguez. 
Yeah, okay. And you don't think Ivan Rodriguez would be deserving of his number being retired? He played for the Yankees. He might as well. <laughs> well, he would. He would. My point is if Jorge Posada was real, his fucking jersey would be retired. He'd be a hero. If he won us four World Series rings, we would be slobbing on him every chance he gets. We'd be riding his ears to... To all but when we of, could, when oh, we, would we retire his number? Yeah. But you know no, what? Yeah. Right, they're allowed. The they're allowed to retire his number. I mean, Sal's right in the fact that these were good players. Like that, that should not be questioned. These were good players. I, I think the point that I want to get back to is that they are retiring these guys' numbers for the same reason that the Orioles built all those statues in 2012 because they had to do something because the team was not winning. They had to do something to try to totally. catch their attention. And I think that that's a lot of the motivation behind this stuff with the Yankees right now. So, so how, how, come, how come the number 24 for the Orioles is not retired? For Rick Dempsey? Yeah. Because he's yeah. a dildo. No. <laughs> I'm going to get fired, <laughs> Sal. The guy, the guy had like a out. good series. <laughs> yeah, but he was a world like. Right. That's and he has his name on the warehouse because of it. And it looks like a because of it. Yeah, but analysis. All right, all right. Too much talking. We're sounding like first take or one of those ones where we talk over each other. This is on. This is ridiculous. This is indisputable. LeBron James. All right. Um, Real quick, guys. uh, If you guys had to pick. Uh, an Oriole maybe of the past that hasn't had their number retired, maybe not a Hall of Famer, because uh, obviously the <laughs> obviously the Orioles only retire certified Hall of Famers mm-hmm. as uh, as retire their numbers. Uh, who would you guys retire if if you had the uh, the option for the day? You're in charge of it. You retire one person's number who's never been retired. Uh, would you would be anyone that you picked? I'm gonna go first, Jake. But I'm also I've got to touch base on Jorge Posada and Chris Hoyles because <laughs> it was called out to a certain degree. So. There's a stat in Sabermetrics, and you know how I'm a big Sabermetrics individual. There's a stat called Weighted Runs Created Plus, which basically just looks at the situation of how good you are compared to the league average at your position. And Jorge Posada, over his entire career, has 123 plus, which means that he was 20% better than any other catcher during his entire career, which is a great number. There is an Oriole that played in the 90s that was a catcher, that had a hundred and twenty two weighted runs created plus. Gentlemen, can you name this? <laughs> Definitely not Charles Johnson. Lenny Webster. Lenny Webster, yeah. Nope. Mark Parent. Nope. Hundred and twenty two rated runs created plus goes to Chris Hoyles. I just well yeah. Because <laughs> you just said that. I was just joking about <laughs> Charles Johnson. I like, yeah, thought that would be funny. <laughs> Definitely not you know, so, if, so that we need to put Chris Hoyles into the Orioles Hall of Fame and retire his number because if Jorge Posada is so good of a player offensively as a catcher, you know, Chris Hoyles obviously deserves the, you know, the the honor of being having a retired number. But in reality, there are you know people that may be a better candidate. Um, the one name that always pops out to me from a pitching standpoint is Dave McNally. Dave McNally is an amazing pitcher, and I think even like Jim Palmer would come back and say. Dick McNally was one of the better pitches that you know he was able to be with. Um, he's got some great numbers in terms of K per nine. He's got great numbers in terms of wins that we love to talk about on this podcast, 181 wins. Um, I think that if I had to pick a pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles, I would probably retire his number, but I don't really think that the Orioles need to retire any numbers. I think it's really nice to have just Hall, Baseball Hall of Fame you know, inductees have their numbers retired. I don't think we need to go about it and retire a bunch of other people's numbers. If you're doing that, then you're going to be retiring numbers like Dave McNally, Mike Flanagan, Mike Mussina, Boog Paul, um, Kenny Williams. Um, and these are all very good players, but they're not Hall of Fame players. Sure. Uh, the only the only number I can imagine the Orioles retiring at this point is number seven. Um, and I think that there's probably a lot to be said for the impact on the organization as a whole and frankly on, on Major League Baseball and the industry that, that Cal Ripken Sr. had. Um, that's a number that they tend to with, withhold from circulation, so to speak. But uh, it, it wouldn't hurt my feelings to see them actually uh, officially retire that number, uh, give a little pomp and circumstance, remembrance of great Orioles teams and one of the masterminds behind that in uh, Cal Ripken Sr. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's that was one of the ones that came up. Uh, we were talking about this on Twitter the other day. Of course, the other one was uh, Elrod Hendricks and uh, Mike Flanagan. Also, numbers that they've taken 
taken out of circulation, as you said. Like they're really not giving those uh, numbers out anymore. Well, one last um, thing. But, let's let's look way into the future. And if you look back at 2012 through 2014, in the the area and the era that brought the Orioles back from the uh, the the wasteland of baseball, uh, if Buck Showalter wins a crap ton of more games as an Oriole manager, and the Orioles go on to win a bunch of uh, you know playoff series, do you think that eventually Buck Showalter might be looked at in such a light that you know? guys that we're talking about of, of great Orioles and uh, people who, whose numbers might uh, be considered for retirement. Is there, is there a Hall of Fame manager that hasn't won, that didn't win a World Series? Because I think unless, you, unless Buck wins a World Series here, I don't see them, I don't see him being a Hall of Famer, I don't see them retiring the number. I think it hinges on that. If he wins a World Series, I think that that's, I mean... If Buck wins the World Series, I might get alcohol poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to streak down, I'm gonna streak down Utah Street. We, we have that recorded. That means that the Orioles win the World Series. Joe Pa's streaking down Utah right. Street. Well, Sal already took his pants off after Brian Roberts' grand slam. So. But that's true. We here on he the OBT podcast remove our clothing for very little, so uh, it's great. Um, so I, I mean that would that would be my opinion. I would see maybe if they end up uh, if they if he ends up winning a World Series here, I think that's that would be the only way. Just based on their uh, past, like you said, of retiring numbers and how they do and do not. Looks like a terrorist <laughs> is about to kill us. Um, so on that note. <laughs> Guys, let's. Uh, it's been great talking to you guys. Before we go, we did set. Up, actually, you guys are sticking with us for the rest of the, the program, so we know we have a confession segment coming up from one, if not both, of you guys. But before then, we're gonna play the newlywed game, of course. Well, the newlywed game podcast edition. Already sent you guys some questions. Basically, we're gonna find out: Do you guys know each other better, or do Joe Pot and Sal know each other better? So I think biblically, or not. what are we talking about here? <laughs> We're not in a strictly man on man relationship. Because right. we yeah. do not have quite a, uh, a um, we don't take our pants off as easily. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> That's fair. The, hey, neither do I because Joe has a bad wingman. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that in your final thought. Gosh. Save it for the podcast. All right, so uh, let's kick it off here. We'll play the newlywed theme, newlywed game theme. And, uh, all right, so uh, we flipped a metaphorical coin backstage, and uh, and Scott and Jake, since you guys are our guests, you won the toss. Do you guys want to go first, or do you do you want to, uh, do you want uh, Sal and Joe Pa to go first? Uh, let them get their pants off first. Go ahead. All right, pants off, dance off. Got it. So, uh, Joe Pa. That's usually what happens. <laughs> all right, so here's I how, don't wait. Here's how it's going to go. Um, Joe Pa. I asked Sal three questions earlier today, three of which you don't know. So it's going to be your job to respond the way that you think that Sal responded to these questions. The, to uh, Scott and Jake, and uh, Jake, you'll be answering the answers to Scott's questions. So we'll do Joe Pa and Sal first. <clears throat> Sal, you are a closed book. I think I'm. I think I'm pretty. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> no, but yes. Okay. You're. I think you're ready. Okay. All right. So we all know it's it's a well-known fact. Growing up, Sal's favorite baseball player was Alex Rodriguez. And guys, you probably didn't know this, Scott oh. and Jake, but oh. Sal, Sal is still still Sal's favorite player, Alex Rodriguez. Favorite <laughs> <laughs> um, Posada. <laughs> right, his, that was his second favorite player. Um, but my question for you is, Joe, mm -hmm. what was Sal's favorite Oriole growing up? Sal's favorite Oriole growing up. Um, I would probably have to say Cal Ripken Jr. Because that was the obvious choice. And Not we'll play the... Not Cal Ripken Jr. Sal, what was your answer? Um, it was Mike Messina until he left, and then it was Jay Gibbons because we had a personal relationship. <laughs> was I was I supposed to answer? Was that a two part question? No, you could have either. Yeah, what was what was Sal's favorite player until he no. went to the Yankees? Well, I mean, I was like seven. eight when Messina left, so like Messina was my favorite player until I was like eight. 
Yeah. Either answer would have been. Never even heard him ever say that. All right. Apparently, he tried to keep his personal relationship with Jay Gibbons a secret. Everyone knows about that. I've talked about that on the podcast. Guys, I did not know that. <laughs> he said lefties rule. <laughs> he inscribed a baseball to Sal once. That's a bad. baseball bat. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. He gave me his bat. I bet he gave me his bat. <laughs> Here, he bet gave you the strange man's bat, bat, did he? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You're not, not going to get Randy Jackson to sign your bat. Why do you think he walks like he does? <laughs> All right, this is spiraling out of control <laughs> rapidly. Question number two. Oh, gee, just gonna listen to this <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. What was Sal's favorite moment of the 2012 season? Well, if he's an idiot, he'd say something else besides the division title, so I'm saying the division title. 2012. 2012? Oh. Not 2014. No, I'm 2012. sorry. I, I, the I, it, was, down. It, it was... No, no, no. You asked me the question today, what the 2012... Shh. You can't spoil the question. 2012 season, <laughs> I would have to say. <clears throat> Jake Evans sitting next to him at the game. <laughs> <laughs> I, the 2012 season, I'm going to say my favorite as well is the Cal Ripken night. Mm-hmm. So, what was These are answer? hard questions. Shut up. I have neighbors. The ALDS game two, the first playoff victory we ever witnessed. Yeah. In person. Okay. Man. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. So, question number three, your final question. You're 0 for 2 so yeah, far, by the way. It's going to be a no for... This is why all marriages end in divorce. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be Not in front of the kids, guys. Your... Not in front of the kids. <clears throat> question number three. What is Sal's go-to karaoke song? You're never going to get this. How am I... You're never going to get this. Never I know it, Jim. Up. <laughs> How am I supposed to know any of these? Joe's would be ace of base, but like, I don't think that's... <laughs> oh, my God. Um, total Eclipse of the Heart. It's an over. Sorry, Joe Pa. The correct answer is what, Sal? Good Directions by Bill. Bill. All have asked me calculus <laughs> questions. <laughs> I could have given you a better answer. All right, all right. Well, you still have a chance. Yeah, this is horse shit. <laughs> all right, all right. Guys, you're pretty much guaranteed to win now. Um, all right. Who would, nice, Jake, you'll be answering Scott's Jake, question. Jake, what is Scott's last name? <laughs> Spell Scott. <laughs> Spell Bunt. <laughs> In perfect cursive. All right. Uh, Jake, who did Scott say... Was was his favorite Orioles TV or radio announcer of all time? I'm gonna have to go with Jim Palmer. Mm, incorrect. Ooh, Scott, what was the answer? The obvious answer is gonna have to be John Miller. Oh, John are you kidding Miller. me, Scott? You have an, an obsessive, compulsive thing for Jim Palmer. I do, and I have it for him being a pitcher and for his rocking body, but not for it being a pitcher. <laughs> Yeah, I'm playing in a protest that Scott does not know himself. That's probably a good case, actually. All right, <laughs> All right moving on to question number two. Which season meant more to Scott, 2012 or 2014? Uh, um, I'm going to say 2012. Scott? 2012. All right, we have our first correct answer. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, that's what I feel about that. All right, so uh, you guys are up one nothing so far. And the final question, Jake. A million Scott fucking answered. songs in this world. All right, <laughs> calm down. I, I'm going to have to do a lot of editing. <laughs> um, question number three. Jake, if you weren't podcasting together, what type of business would you co-own with Scott? Um, you mean like above board? <laughs> Fake radio. <laughs> uh, if we were to own a business together that was not human trafficking, Scott and I would be, uh, I don't know, maybe we would, maybe we would own a bar. Okay. <sighs> Pretty close, actually. Mm-hmm. What we are doing. Uh, no. I, can't, I, I, I would give like a half point. There's a, theme, half point. There's a theme to what, this. Did, did he say human trafficking? Was that it? No, there's a, 
Jake, if you were to open a bar, what would the theme of the bar have to be? Human trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> is, the, is the name of the bar Puzzles? Is that the puzzle? What are you talking about here? Uh, I, I, I don't think we can... I think, I think that's uh, a I think we're out of question. Scott, what was your answer? What with a dinner theater, Jake? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I can see that. I can see that. Not not the same. I think we're going to have to give a zero on that one. So uh, you guys got one out of three right. So you guys are at one nothing right You're now. better than me. Better than Joe Pa, but Joe Pa had some tough questions. They were hard they questions. Were the easiest and, questions. No, they were with multiple answers. All right. Who knows about me and Gibbons? So right. would you would you do uh, karaoke in our dinner theater? I think is the real question. I'll do karaoke anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it would be mine. Would be Take Me Home Tonight. So screw you, Sal. That's a good song. Yeah. That's a good one. Good call. All right, money. By Eddie Money. Yeah. Sal, are you ready to answer Joe Pa's questions now? Yeah. Yeah, he's ready to get them all right. All right. We all know that Joe Pa formerly worked at M- Masson. <laughs> what? All right. Wait. No. Can you guys behave for a second? I didn't say anything. You definitely did. All right. <clears throat> Wait, are you saying formally? Okay, I won't say. Joe say pa- anything. Okay. Joe Pa works at Masson. What is Joe Pa's official title? At Masson. He was a production assistant. Ding! Correct. All right, production assistant is correct. And that's, <laughs> believe it or not, harder than you would guess because I can never remember what Joe Pa's He's title is. He's basically the Chandler Bing of Masson. <laughs> I'm basically the Steve Pierce of Masson. We call him Masson Bitch? <laughs> no. Not not even. But not really. We'll edit that off. Coffee, okay? <laughs> all right, so that's one. All right, yeah, yeah that's, that's an easy one because I say me. it all the effing time. All right. Sal, what is Joe Pa's favorite beer? Oh, well, I know what his least favorite beer is. Joe Pa's favorite beer that he gets all the time. Every single time we go out, he's like, oh, look, there's 45 different beer options. You know what? I'm going to go with a Blue Moon. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. And I'm Correct. holding the Bud Light. I thought you would say Bud Light. He pretends, he pretends like the craft beers interest him, but all he wants no, they is that white Belgian with the orange slice. That's all he needs. I just like white Belgian. <laughs> so, all right, Sal and Joe Pye go up two to one. Final question. <clears throat> what was Joe Pye's favorite moment of the 2014 Orioles season? Uh, I would say... After the Orioles won the division title, just the atmosphere around Camden Yards and in the locker room. Joe Pa, what was your answer? My answer was the division title. Clinchmas, all right. Ding, 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 ding. As is everyone else's favorite moment. I don't know. I liked a- ALDS game two. It was pretty darn good. Damn right. <laughs> I wasn't good, man. I cried tears. All right. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Scott and Jake, you guys are down, what, uh, three, to one. three to one. Three to one. So you guys you guys need two to tie, three to win. That's all right. We're just lulling you into an accurate sense of security. <laughs> all right, Scott, you ready to answer Jake's questions? <laughs> yep, let's lose this thing. All right. All right. So I asked Jake, what was what is Jake's favorite game in which you both were in attendance together? Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to go with game two of this year's ALDS because Jake showed up late to that game and had an absolute bitch in time getting there, but uh, was able to be there for the uh, Delman Young uh, go-ahead double. Jake, what was your answer? Ding, 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 ding. ALDS game two. All right, all right. See? Not everybody's favorite moment, Joe Pa. <laughs> all right, Scott, for the tie. Who was Jake's favorite Oriole growing up? Let's see. Growing up. I'm just going to go with Ripken. Jake? Brady Anderson. That's who I was thinking, too, but I go with Ripken. Oh, well. All right. (laughs) All right. So you need this one to tie and to force us into the sudden death round, of which I am not planned for. So... (laughs) really hope you guys get this one wrong. <laughs> I, I didn't even get this question right. 
Yeah, this one, this one, there's about. This is a question, actually, Joe Pod. There's about twelve answers to this question. So if they oh, get, just like how Sal's answers yep. were twelve, and I couldn't guess any of them. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. So if you get any of these right, you get three points. <laughs> Sorry, right, Scott. Any number, any number at all. <laughs> I'll take the rate of 400. <laughs> I take the tits now. <laughs> All right, Scott. You wrote Texas with a dollar sign. What did, what did Jake say? Was the best Beatles song and album? Oh, uh, best album is going to have to be... I'm going to go with Revolver. Um, and the best song from Revolver from, the, from that for the Beatles? Um... God, wow! It's a lot of hard ones there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll go. Oh, all right. I, I, I think we have to give. That, that's like a two-part question, so I you definitely get partial credit for that. Yeah. Jake, what what did you say was your favorite album? Revolver is the best all-around album. What is your favorite song? There we go. My my favorite song is uh, "Tiller Was You" off of "With the Beatles." Okay, yeah. The, the problem with Revolver really comes back to it's hard to pick out one song from Revolver because everything just flows so well on that album, which makes it pretty much one of the best albums of all time. But I, I don't know if I really can pick out one song from Revolver and say, yeah, I would also only listen to that one song on Revolver. Well, there there you go. So I I guess it's a Timberlake tie. There's no and there's. They got partial this credit so and got a full fixed. point. He answered revolt. You're a two-part you question. Us two part questions. You be the host next time. We can't. You never put up the episodes when I heard. <laughs> <laughs> my podcast, my rules. I'll tell you what. We're, you we're, guys we're, started. We'll let, let Sal win, and in commemoration of his winning, I'm going to send him a Jorge Posada card from uh, the 1994 Topps box set. Okay. There. Signed by Andy Pettit. <laughs> uh, and let's not given. go that far, uh, but it'll be just a uh, bent-up, crumbled-up Jorge Posada, pretty much exactly like the rest of his career, which is uh, pretty much pathetic. <laughs> he, he only accepts Jay Gibbons. You should be quiet because he can probably hear you. <laughs> Let him... <laughs> Is that an ear size it joke? It is. It's an ear. That joke. was good. That was good. That was good. All right, gentlemen. Well, we appreciate having you guys on for the uh, for the first edition and may, perhaps probably the last edition of the OPP podcast Newlywed Podcast Game. So give yourselves a round of applause, guys. Yeah. Thanks for coming on and doing that. That was a lot of fun. Even though Joe Pod is pissed. Yeah. Um, all right. So we'll take another quick break. Come back back with a confession, hopefully from these guys, and any closing thoughts we may have. We'll be right back. I say we make this thing a separate podcast. Sure. Whatever you want. I'm good with that. Is that cool? That's yep. We'll split it into two episodes. Let's do Dude, that. That newly went a separate podcast. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the OVP podcast. We're still here with Jake and Scott from Bird's Eye View. Gentlemen, thanks again for joining us this evening. We appreciate you coming on, spending your time with us. I'm sure you guys have much better things to do than to sit here on a Thursday night and talk with us and pretended play radio with us. We we appreciate you lowering the standards of your program to allow us on. It's uh it's it's been fun. And, and we enjoy you actually thinking that we actually have standards and uh, we can do other things with our time. <laughs> uh, make sure make sure you guys check out these guys at birdseyeviewbaltimore.com and uh, follow them on Stitcher Radio, follow them on Twitter at Bird's Eye View BAL also. So guys, uh, we do a segment, well we used to do a segment on here called Confessions, uh, where weekly we'd have a confession here, an embarrassing, uh, embarrassing story or uh, anecdote that from our lives that we ha- feel that we had to get off our chest and explain to the listeners, um, you know, just to, just to clear our conscience a little bit. So what, nowadays, we've retired the bit just because we've pretty much confessed everything that's ever happened to us in our lives, and it's no longer entertaining. So when we have guests on, we'd like to have give them the opportunity to confess something as well. So, uh, Scott, uh, uh, you mentioned before we went on the air that you did, did yourself have something to confess. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go old school, crank up Usher, and just imagine that Usher is playing right now, Confessions Part 2, because that's what we'll add later in on editing. And um, go ahead and feel free to share with the, the listening audience what your confession is this week. Sure. So I've got a big confession, and it goes to my podcast host, Jake English. Jake, I've got a confession. Um, 
back when I was a kid, um, I definitely listened to the oldies and stuff like that with Steve Rouse. But I had a big issue where um, I had a thing where I didn't like the Beatles as a kid, and one of my favorite bands was actually the Beach Boys. I, <laughs> I blame my parents for a certain regard because I was raised in a family that took me to a Jethro Tull concert in 1989 in the Meadowlands. <laughs> Um, but luckily enough, I came into some good company that uh, was able to uh, change my views in my teenage years in high school and uh, let's just uh, say dabble in certain uh, medicinal varieties as well. <laughs> That's it. Podcast over. <laughs> We're done. Bird's eye view is a wrap. <laughs> wow. That's big. That is earth-shattering news. You heard it right here on the OBP podcast. Bird's eye view, done. Uh, oh, my gosh. This so, is whew. My question for you, Scott, <laughs> I guess the real confession is, did you pretend to like the Beatles at first? Or were you just like, hey, I don't like the Beatles? Or were you just like, did you just hop on and ride it out? And No, like I said, I actually met up with some friends in high school, and I basically told them I said I don't like the Beatles. You know, I'm just not a big fan. And, uh, you know... No, you're just a big jerk. I started listening to them again, and I was just like, oh, actually, these guys are pretty good. And then I started to really get into them pretty well. And then it was only once me and Jake met up again in our adult years that I was just like, wow, you know, finally someone else that I can talk to Beatles with. And, hey, we can talk about Orioles baseball on the side as well on occasion. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that is a great confession. See, that's why we no longer confess anything on the program we don't have anything like that to confess anymore. Am I allowed to play too? I have nowhere near as good a confession now. Sure. Scott's going to put me to shame. My my first job when I was uh, I think 15, 14 or 15 was uh, working at a church and uh, I was fired from that job. And, <laughs> and frankly, like I think that once you are fired by a church, like you should just pack it in. Like you can't be employed anywhere because if you if you are fired from a place whose business is forgiveness, like you're just you know. Yeah, how do you put that one on your resume? You're like, uh, I see here that you worked for um, our father of uh, of Joseph uh, for for three years, but then it looks like it just kind of stopped. Uh, what happened there? Uh, to be fair, Jake, you get fired. Yeah. You got fired. fired. You didn't. Hold you got fired. You didn't. Right? You didn't take money, Trey, did you? No, no, no. It was nothing like that. And you got fired okay. from the Catholic Church, right? I, I did, yeah. So you reached the age limit, basically, and they said, oh, we don't need you anymore. Why so. did you get fired? <laughs> there is some debate as to why I was fired. My, my <laughs> version of the story is a lot different yeah. than their version of the story. I had to go. I went on a foreign exchange trip, and I told the people <laughs> that I, I was going to be gone for a certain number of weeks, and they were like, well, you've got to be here. And I was like, well... It's not happening. I said, well, if you don't show up, you're fired. And I said, Das Vidanya, I'm going to the Ukraine. And when I got back, I didn't have a job. Wow. So their story is next that I week didn't show up to work. I was going to say, next week, we'll have them on to give their side of the story. <laughs> Why Jake was actually fired from the church. Tune in next week to the OVP podcast. Not that wow, I'm good. Actually- it has nothing, it's not nothing like that. You know, Jake, uh, that's... Those guys probably like the Beach Boys, too, so don't feel too bad. <laughs> oh, we might have to edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like day two of Lent, and if I get hit by lightning, I'm going to kill you all. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, uh, we appreciate you guys sharing the uh, sharing the confessions. That's uh, it's always a fantastic time to have people Confessions in. Church. Confessions Church. Hey, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe Pond Sal, do you guys have any closing thoughts? I do. Can it be about the NBA? No. God oh, damn no. it. No. 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 Right. no. So, guys, um, and I don't know how big of fans you are. Of, oh, I'm a huge fan. Of, of Thomas DeLong. Of, Dude. Of Blink-182. We, Cal and I grew up. No. Cal and I grew up in a time where it was okay to watch three naked men run around on a music video what and, and thought it was cool. What? Yeah. So, shush. Now, so... You get your time. You can you can respond if you like to with a closing thought. This is none of your business. Tom DeLonge has broken our hearts multiple times. <laughs> Several times. Several times by uh, getting out of blank and getting back together. And now he's saying that he's not in it anymore. And not, and not only is he not in blank anymore, but he is now coming out that he has spoken to aliens and he has encountered aliens. 
and he has given his entire conversation and his his point as and his theory as to what had happened that night. I'm not going to get into detail. Check out Paper Magazine if you want. But Paper to Magazine, if you if you want to read Tom DeLonge's encounter with aliens and how they can actually channel your thoughts. <laughs> and oh, it sounds it sounds hysterical, but I am not too far off from believing him. <laughs> and that's that's wait, my wait, closing. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, no, no, that's my closing thought. That part of me believes Tom DeLonge in his crazy, irrelevant. Right. And you guys did not know that about me. That's so. so it's that's almost like a confession. With. That's almost like it a is a confession at the same time. Of sorts. So, that is yes. a sort of confession. All right, Sal. Don't comment. No NBA talk. All right, I'll just share a story from yesterday. So, I had a bar shift last night, and before <laughs> I stopped in, I decided to stop at the dollar store next door because they sell the large Gatorades for only a dollar. Go to a gas station, you're paying one forty nine easy on a good day. So I load up on Gatorade and I go to the front counter and a black male, probably age, early 30s, was standing behind the register giving me this befuddled look and he didn't say anything and I smiled and said, hi, how you doing? And he goes, uh, and then silence. About five seconds later, he goes, Oh, uh, big man, I uh, I got to tell you something. So I, I leaned a little closer. Like, granted, this is in broad daylight and in public, so I wasn't too afraid or anything. And he said, uh, bruh, you got, some, you got some shit all over your face. <laughs> and um, the immediate reaction was that, oh, maybe there's some... Like some like toothpaste in my beard yeah, or something order. like that, uh, some snot to my upper lip, and then I immediately realized he was referring to the ashes on my forehead. <laughs> and this adult male that had clearly never been outside on <laughs> a day after Mardi Gras, as he would call it, um, he then goes and says, "Yo, um, what on your forehead?" And I'm like, oh, yes, that's right. It's ashes. And he goes, oh, okay. I, why? <laughs> and I said, oh, it's 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 a church thing. And he goes, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, I saw some other beeps with some shit on their forehead also. <laughs> and then he rung me up, and I walked away. <laughs> and I walked away more enlightened knowing that, yes, it would be so glorious to be so simple-minded. <laughs> to not know what ashes are, or the purpose of Ash Wednesday. How do you be 30, and it's like seeing a guy with a yarmulke and be like, bro, your hat is small! <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you're missing the beauty of the story, though, because next year on Ash Wednesday, you're going to get the ashes and walk away thinking, dude, I got some shit on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back to that store, and he's going to be like, bro, you got some shit on your brain. Great, great story. All right, uh, Jake and Scott, thank you so much again for coming on the program tonight and uh, talking baseball and Jorge Posada with us. Uh, <laughs> we uh, will definitely have you guys on uh, sometime during the actual Orioles season, so we have a little more Orioles substance to talk about. Uh, remind the guys again one more time where we can find you, where to follow you guys, and where they can listen to your podcast. Sure. So if you don't want to read or hear anything about the NBA, you should come and follow us on Bird's Eye View BL Twitter. I uh, used to come to our website at birdseyeviewbaltimore.com because we can promise you there will be no NBA content whatsoever on yeah. that website. So uh, it's a good place to avoid all NBA talk and all Jorge Posada talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I that's what I love about you guys. No NBA, no Jorge Posada. That's gonna be on your next shirt that we designed for you guys. No Jorge, no NBA. All right. Well gentlemen, thanks for coming on the program tonight. Uh, make sure you guys uh, follow Sal at Sal Team Six, follow follow Joe Pa at Joe Papa on Twitter, follow us at OBP Apparel and OBP Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to us. And listen to us uh, on a weekly basis, please. Thank you for listening. I'm Cal. We'll talk to you guys next week. Uh.